Hey guys and gals, thanks for clicking. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and do a Rayson Hall Effect Ignition install on the CX650 build here. So stick around, hope you enjoy. All right, now to get started, you're gonna go ahead and want to have your instruction install manual printed out. And then you should have this by now if you've been watching these videos as much as I preach them. But you should have a factory service manual for the bike. That'll show you uh, some of your timing marks on the flywheel and stuff like that. That'll give you the procedure for rotating that down and kind of deciphering what those markings are. But uh, here you're going to see just quickly installing the rotor onto the back of the crank or the back of the flywheel. So we have that here. That's going to be buried inside the back of the engine so not too hard to install you're just going to want to put a mark on the trailing edge of the uh, of where the magnet resides marking to the center that way you can just physically see the rotation and the approximation of where that mark is in relation to the pickups so anyway you're going to go ahead and get that on the bike tighten it down and um, then what we're going to do is uh, start installing the hall effect plate itself Okay, so right here you can actually see the Hall Effect plate. Now, what this does is you have a sensor here and a sensor here, or they're known as pickups. Now, the rotor that you just installed to replace the uh, factory advance mechanism is going to rotate and the magnet is going to pass by each of these sensors. Now, that's like coil one, coil two, or left and right cylinder. Um, and whenever it passes, that, passes by that, that's going to give the signal to send to the control unit and then that's going to send fire out to the coils. So pretty trick setup and uh, the benefit of this is that you're getting rid of your stock uh, stock advance spring unit. So I'm going to demonstrate how this works right now. So with this system it's known as the Hall Effect. Now what this is doing is getting rid of the transistorized stock ignition system for, for this particular bike. Now this is a GL650 engine. So being an 83, you know, let's say like 82 and later or something, you had a transistorized ignition system. You know, you know if that's your bike because it has those two little boxes from Honda. Now, while it's not necessarily a really bad system, they do age as all electronic parts do. So the benefit of this system is that we are actually, uh, beyond upgrading to just modern electronics, we're getting rid of the stock advance unit. Now, this is your ignition advance and this is how this works. So I drew a line here. Now you notice this has uh, some springs in it. Now those springs act as, uh, as what advances the, the mechanism or advances the timing as the engine spins up in RPM. So if you look here, it's lined up this way. Now at, this is attached to the back of the crank. Now the faster this spins, the more uh, centrifugal force is going to act upon these weights, okay? Now these weights are held in or held back by these springs. Now, once it spins fast enough, you can see those springs are going to, like the, the spring tension is gonna be overcome. And then this relation to the plate relation, this is your pickup, you can see it's going to advance. So the faster the engine spins, it's going to advance the timing. Now, the issue with this is that it's basically dedicated, uh, your advance is dedicated on some 40 year old springs now you can replace the springs you can replace the springs with something of a different different tension and what that would give you is a faster or later uh, ramp rate on your ignition advance now that's great a lot of a lot of guys do that if you look at like a you know an aftermarket distributor for you know uh, an old like a muscle car or something like that a lot of those have advanced springs in them that you can change and you can dial in that ignition ramp rate but we're ditching all of this the rotor that we installed is fixed to the crank now it's not there's no adjustment in that and the reason for that is the box up top here actually controls electronically the ramp rate and the timing curve itself so I can actually program or there's choose between four pre-programmed curves where that timing comes in how fast and ultimately like you can change rev limits things like that so it's a superior design, it's pretty trick, and uh, it's real compact, so 
as of now, we have got rid of this, our rotor's installed, and now I can work on getting the plate, the actual pickup plate, fixed to the, uh, fixed to the bike. All right, so before I do anything, I want to make sure I have a new gasket in here. going to tie that up with one, two little bolts to keep it in place. All right, our gasket's on and we can put our plate on here. Now, there are two screws. There's one down here in the corner. There's one down up here. So those two screws, I'm using the factory ones in this instance. Your kit may vary. Um, I'm using the factory screws to hold down the plate itself. Now, when you tighten these down, you want to be pretty pretty dang gentle because you don't want to crack the plate. So we're going to go ahead and get this lined up here. And there's a groove here, you can see, a little groove cut in there. That's where that bolt's going to reside and that cut is going to allow timing advanced retardation. So go ahead and slide that on. And right now I'm going to put these screws in by hand, I will Loctite them eventually to keep them from backing out. But I'm going to get the timing set and then we'll take those screws out one by one. Now I'm extra lucky in this because this is a full custom build. I don't have a coolant bottle right here because I'm going to make my own. So right now I have enough free space to where I can actually work on this. But if it was your factory bike, you would have to either have the engine out or somehow get that coolant bottle out first. Now, per the race on instructions, we're going to actually set the timing, set the timing plate rotation based off of the left cylinder. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here. This is the same on CX500s and GLs on all years. The markings might be different, but the, uh, the premise is the same. So in here we have We have our markings. There's an FS, FI, so basically your fire mark, and then just below this, which is hard to see, there's going to be your cylinder marking. So we're gonna have, um, say, TR or TL. So this is gonna be the top left. So basically, we are just before top dead center, or just before top dead center, on the uh, left cylinder. Coming down here, go ahead and pop your access cover off the front. And then from here, you can use a 17 mil socket. That's gonna fit in there, and that is going to be allow you to rotate the engine with a wrench. All right, guys, so I'm gonna take you through the markings on the flywheel. Now, this is a GL650, so the markings are slightly different, but the premise is the same. So the FSFI is the fire mark, and there's gonna be two of these lines. So two of those markings, one for the left cylinder, one for the right cylinder. Now, this one, we are currently on the left, so I'm gonna rotate it, and then you're gonna see we're at the top dead center of the left cylinder. All right, we're gonna keep going. Give me a big old space. And soon we'll be coming up on the right cylinder. Whoop, there we go. I'm gonna back this off just a little bit so you can see that double dash, that's the full advance mark for, for the cylinder. So whenever the original timing plate does full advance, that's the point at which you would uh, set your timing. But anyway, so we're on the right cylinder now and that's the fire mark as you've seen. And we have the top dead center. Obviously the fire is going to be before top dead center because the timing is advanced. And then from here, we keep going. We're going to have another double dash. All right. That's the full advance mark on the left cylinder. Now we're at the fire mark for the left cylinder. And then of course, top dead center on the left cylinder. So you get the idea. Now we have a wrench on the front of the engine and what we're going to be looking for is the fire mark for the left cylinder. 
So I'm gonna go ahead, rotate the engine over. So it, sees, it says TR, so that was top right. So that was the fire mark on the right cylinder. So here we're gonna pass that. We're gonna hit two dashes. That's the full advance mark for the left cylinder, okay? Here's the fire mark for the left cylinder. Back that off just a hair. Okay, right there. Now, this is the point where we're gonna move down to the, um, to the plate down low and we're gonna set the light to match that LED there. All right, guys, we are down here at the plate. Now you can see the yellow wire over here. That is for the left coil. And then the LED right there, that's the left LED telling you when it's gonna fire. So the idea here is that we want the uh, operating window or the spark window to end at the uh, FSFI mark or at the traditional like uh, full retard uh, fire mark for the stock system. So as you saw, the flywheel is set to the FSFI or the fire mark on the left cylinder. Now I'm gonna go ahead and power up the system. And then we're gonna rotate this plate. Look for the LED. Okay, now, what we're looking for is this threshold. I'm gonna rotate this to the left to where it turns on, and then rotate it to the right just as it turns off, okay? And right where it turns off is where we wanna lock it down. So now I'm going to go ahead and snug it down. Visually confirm that it's not the plate's not touching the rotor anywhere. And then once you're satisfied with that, you can go ahead and snug the other screw down and you have it timed. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and rotate the engine over by hand. You're going to see the LEDs fire. All right, simple as that. All right, moving up top here, I have the cover off of the, off the entire setup. So that's to access and check your LEDs here, as well as make your adjustments to your timing curve. Now you'll notice these two pieces right here. There's, uh, I think, four prongs, something like that. There's four prongs here. Now you can change the position of these and uh, you know the instructions are in the actual install manual, but you change your timing curve by moving these little clips depending on what contacts are being made where. And that's gonna give you four pre you know four pre-programmed timing curves. Now this thing's really straightforward as how you as as how you wire it. Colors are pretty self-explanatory. I did modify mine a little bit. I have power drawn off of the uh, Morty unit off of this side. So this wire comes in and just runs through the loom. And then I have it doubled back on this side. And then the other modification I had to do is drill and tap the case right here. You can see that's my ground. So I have a 16 gauge ground for the actual ignition system ran into the main chassis ground. And then I have another ground for the LED tail light just tapped into here. But all of them are tapped into one one specific spot in the splice back here. I don't know if you can see that or not. But as of now, I have the curve I want in here. I have the ground set, and I know the LEDs work. I'm gonna go ahead and fire this thing up. And then I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this thing over uh, by the key. And you can actually go ahead and see them uh, firing off. And that and those marks actually match the uh, timing plate too. Real simple. 
All right, and for now, I'm gonna go ahead and pull those screws out one by one, and I'll put just a little bit of blue Loctite on them, and then I'll go ahead and tighten them up. Now, I'm not gonna go cranking down on them real hard. They're just gonna be a little bit past snug. So that's all you need on this. Again, you don't wanna damage that timing plate itself. And then from there, put the cover on it, and we are good to go. So this thing, very clean install. Looks good on here. I know it functions. I have it timed correctly. Um, wired in basically just via a single power output from the uh, Morty system, but that single power output would normally be like from your ignition switch, or not your ignition switch, but your kill switch or something like that. It would wire in normally to your bike, but again, this is a custom application. So everything's gonna be like a little bit different how I do it, but regardless, it's a pretty straightforward install. And then as far as your outputs from the box, you'll have, I think, four wires or three wires. So right here, I have those leads. That's going to my coil. So three leads on here. The center is just your main power input. So that's going to be my red. Your yellow, as you saw on the plate, that's our left coil. So that's going to go on the left side. Blue to the right. So very straightforward. Then we'll have two leads, two spark plug leads, straight to the valve covers. All right, guys, that about concludes this video. I appreciate you sticking with me for so long. If you found this video helpful or if you enjoyed it or, or both, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. So I put out new videos at least once a week, mainly twice a week though. So stick around, stick with me if you like seeing stuff like this, either detailed videos or adventure rides or, or whatever I'm building, whatever I'm working on in the shop. So come along with me for the ride. I think you'd enjoy it. So. And then if you want to go uh, another step further, you know, and if you want to support Brick House Builds, go ahead and pick up a hat or a shirt and hopefully soon some hoodies. So you can find those on BrickHouseBuilds.com. But anyway, again, that does it for this video. I appreciate you watching and I'll look for you in the next one. Thanks.